I would like to thank everybody for coming and welcome you to our 2D to 3D webinar. We are excited to share with you this new and exciting technology. If you have questions during the presentation, please use the chat window inside of GoToMeeting. We will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. Please do not put your phone on hold or everyone will be able to hear your hold music. It is important to remember that PartModel will output a parasolid file. This program is to help you, the manufacturing person, get your 2D drawing ready for manufacturing. So manufacturing, tooling, and other manufacturing necessities. Our presenter today is Victor Schott, and I will now send it over to Vic. Well, great. Thanks, Amy. So as Amy mentioned, we're going to start off with the part model application. And we will see that we can easily bring in a DWG DXF file and load it into the software. By default, it automatically opens up in the 2D to 3D environment. And now what we're going to do is very easily define our views. So just by selecting one of the options and then window picking our geometry, I'm setting this up in order to create the 3D model. So of course that's very simple, very easy to use. And once I'm completed with this, I will then go ahead and define my profiles in order to build up the solid model. Using the 2D to 3D trace and the auto loop feature, I'm able to, as you see, just hover over and define or select a profile. So I'll do this in all three views in this case which will then allow the software to create the auto feature. And as you see, that was very easy, straightforward, simple instructions used to define and create this 3D model. As I continue, again, I'll just select geometry from a given view. And build my 3D model. Selecting the trace option once again. Auto feature. Pick OK. That easily and quickly I was able to create this solid model. I didn't have to know how to do an extrude, cuts, revolves, anything of that nature. So now I'm going to save this file and demonstrate how we can bring this into the EdgeCam manufacturing software and prepare it for programming. As Amy mentioned, this file can now be used to create a parasolid. So if you have some other application that you can use a par parasolid model in, you can easily export that out and then use it accordingly. So as it loads here in the workflow interface, we see that the software has given me information about that part. You might have noticed that I started out with a metric drawing and it went ahead and converted it. Some of these are default settings, but again, notice the software verified this model and pretty much said this is a mill type part, so let me load it in as a mill environment. We can easily reposition this datum if we wanted and set this up again as if we're getting ready to manufacture the part. So of course, since we have milling and turning, the part modeler software works in both disciplines. So I'll use this turning 2D example. 
the process is the exact same. So once I set my views, highlight my geometry, in a matter of seconds, I'm ready to start building up my solid model. So as you can see, the learning curve here is basically non-existent. Anybody can easily select these views and then select a geometry for a given interface profile uh, environment. I'll go ahead and add the through holes here. And if any of you folks have experience with CAD software, you pretty much know that that would take a little bit of time to create that solid model, creating your different various work planes, sketch planes, etc. Again, I'll go ahead and save this. Again, launch the CAD link into EdgeCam workflow interface. And now I'll proceed with applying some toolpath, setting this up and simulating. So once again, in the setup, it's as if we're setting it up out on the machine. I'm just verifying information. Once I'm satisfied, now I'm going to have the software automatically create stock for me. So since these values are all known, I'm just going to modify them slightly. Select a machine for the job. pick OK. So there again, in a matter of minutes, I've gone through a 2D wireframe environment, 2D wireframe geometry, created a 3D solid, and brought it into a manufacturing environment where I can now start applying toolpath. With the workflow interface, as you see, I'm working from left to right, sorry, from left to right basically as my flow. So now I'm going to define some turn features so I can apply some built-in automation tools that will allow me to program this part very easily. The planning board will take my features and, uh, and align or organize them for me. And now when I apply the strategies, what the software is doing is verifying the features, selecting tooling suitable to machine that, roughing, finishing, and again as we speak in a matter of literally seconds, I've created a program to machine this part, or should say to turn this part. So now when I go into the simulate machining, our 3D verification here, basically all the components that you see are set to um, set up as collision detection. So when I simulate this, if my tool were to go too far past my OD profile and touch the face of the jaws, it would report as a collision. If you had a longer tool sitting out or a static drill or an end mill and it touches the sheet metal when it indexes or something, it would report a collision. As we can see here, as it's working through the instruction list, any collisions that are detected, I can easily verify which cycle has the, the problem and go ahead and remedy that. 
So in a matter of a few minutes, we went ahead and created a, you know, a mill block from 2D wireframe geometry, created a solid model, as well as a turn component. These models are all associative, meaning that if I were to go back to the application, or if there was another change, I could modify that solid and reload it into the software and update my toolpath. If you wanted to add a small corner break or corner radius, again, those are things that you can do with the software even after the fact. So at this point, I'll turn it back over to Amy, see if there's any questions, and uh, do my best to answer those.